Hi, it's Maggie the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your February 2021 mid-month general readings. We are looking at the last two weeks of February. This reading is for the fire sign of Leo. Welcome everyone. Thanks for taking the time to tune in today for all your your likes, uh, hitting that like button, that share button, uh, and subscribing, all your comments and feedback, all welcome. Thank you so much. So this reading is for Leo for the last two weeks of February. That is if your sun, moon, rising, or Venus is in Leo. Also, if you're cross-watching for a Leo, it's all relevant. Uh, but of course, being a general reading, it's going to resonate a little differently for everyone. So if you know all of your signs, watch them all for additional insight. Uh, if you find that any of the readings do resonate with you and you'd like to uh, reach out for a personal reading, take a deeper look at something, you can click on the description link below for uh, my contact details. Click on that little arrow. You'll see my email address there, Maggie, the number one McGuire at gmail.com. I'd be delighted to hear from you. I do offer a wide variety of readings and uh, I do readings full time. It's all that I do. So I'm pretty diligent at working with other people's schedules and my own to get personal readings set up as quickly as possible. So email me if you're interested. I'd be happy to hear from you and to work with you. Okay, Leo, let's see what's in store for you for the last two weeks of February. Our lovely lions, Leo. Okay, Leo, we begin with temperance, followed by the nine of pentacles. The Eight of Pentacles, followed by the Eight of Wands, and the Page of Wands, followed by the Knight of Cups. And from the bottom of the deck, overall energy and focus for the last two weeks of February is the Seven of Cups. So your overall energy, Leo, is maybe daydreaming, building some castles in the sky, fantasizing, looking at perhaps multiple options, different options. It's interesting because what you're dreaming about or thinking about or looking at different options or considering what options might be out there for you I don't feel like for many of you this is in the earth energy area of your life because that looks pretty set and pretty good. The earth energy area of your life is typically what shows up as pentacles like work, career, finance, property, assets. That actually looks like you're going to have a very good last half of February for that. Um, there is some indication in the emotional area of your life, possibly relationship area of your life, that there are other options or opportunities or offers coming in. We do begin with, uh, we have Temperance and the Nine of Pentacles here. So Temperance is a beautiful card. It's a card of balance. Uh, it's a card of being grounded in who you are, what you are, what you're doing, where you're going, where you've been, um, not allowing yourself to get pulled out, uh, particularly like mentally, emotionally, psychologically, pulled into any other, you know, other areas of drama or conflict. Uh, because temperance is kind of like being in the middle of a, you know, a seesaw or a teeter-totter. To temper something actually in the culinary world means to take things of opposite temperatures, um, of opposite extremes, and blend them together to achieve a harmonious, balanced mixture. Because temperance is ultimately about balance. Uh, balance in yourself and sometimes God's Spirit and the angels and guides granting you or gifting you with that sense of balance not allowing other people places or situations to kind of pull you out particularly emotionally um, and with it is the nine of Pentacles which is a great card particularly financially and materially um, this is a card of independence self-assurance self-empowerment somebody who's worked really hard to get to where they're at and where they're at is a place where they can take care of themselves they don't really rely on anybody else they can provide for themselves quite well particularly financially and materially but being able to do that gives one a sense of self-empowerment and self-confidence as well really loving who you are being in your own skin uh, so that area of life looks really good really balanced um, we have the Eight of Pentacles and the Eight of Wands here. 
So the Eight of Pentacles is my worker bee card, nose to the grindstone, working hard, working a lot, maybe sometimes repetitively, maybe, you know, getting up early, staying up late, putting in some overtime. This can also represent, you know, study, uh, whatever it is, whether you have a traditional job or you own your own business or you're, you're t going to school or you have projects that you work on, the Eight of Pentacles represents, you know, really putting your head down and and kind of grinding through that working hard at whatever you do to support the structure of your day-to-day -day life. Now with it we have the Eight of Wands which is a card of powerful and fast-moving conversations, communication, sometimes traveling. Some of you may be traveling for work or for some kind of projects in the latter half of February. Uh, there's a lot of movement in the area of life that deals with pentacles, earth energy, money, finance, property, assets, real estate, job, etc. For many of you, this is going to be a good two-week period of working. You may find that your work kind of takes off a bit. You may be pulling in more overtime, or if you run a client-based business, it may be that you're, you know, you're just, uh, it, it looks, in terms of particularly money, finance, job, career projects, you're really set, you're stable, and you're doing quite well for yourself uh, for the last two weeks of February. And then we have the Page of Wands and the Knight of Cups, which I feel is kind of maybe centered in a different area of your life. Some of you, it might also be different offers or opportunities coming in at work, um, you know, in regards to work or a project. It may be for some of you that some of you may be being asked to speak about work. Maybe you're being asked to talk to other people. Maybe you're being asked to mentor. Maybe you're being asked to, you know, give a little speech or a conference or um, why am I thinking podcast for some of you if you've been invited to speak about what you do for a living um, on a podcast or something of that sort that must be very specific to somebody um, and I think actually for those of you for whom that resonates because of that or because of that exposure particularly those of you that are in your own business you're going to be getting more inquiries or you know expanding your client base because of that but to get back to this Knight of Wands and Knight of Cups, for some of you that might be an offer or opportunity um, to do something you haven't done before or start off on a new learning course that's related to uh, your work or career or what you're doing. But I feel for some of you this is more emotional because the Knight of Cups, Knights usually represent offers or opportunities for change. And the Knight of Cups is, is the Knight of Water, of emotion, because Cups is governed by the element of water, which covers the emotional area of life. The Knight of Cups often comes charging in to, you know, wearing his heart on his sleeve or her sleeve, you know, offering love, support, encouragement, you know, really kind of pouring it out there on an emotional level. Um, and over it we have the Page of Wands. Pages usually represent young people or people who are manifesting a younger energy. Um, they can be students, apprentices, uh, pages in terms of people or where you're at at a certain point in life. They're in the process of learning, um, gaining knowledge and information and trying to figure out how to apply that, but they're in the early stages yet. It can also represent somebody who's acting maybe in all, not all of that an emotion, uh, not all that emotionally mature kind of way. Yeah, so I'm getting this split, and, and that may be, uh, you know, I think because of some kind of offer or opportunity that's come in, whether it's related to work or business or whether it's related to love and romance, there's something about it that has, because the overall energy is the Seven of Cups, that has kind of put you in this sort of dreamy space of considering what other options or opportunities might be out there for you. So let's clarify a few things. Let's clarify the Seven of Cups. Four of Swords, taking a temporary time out to rest, recover, perhaps recuperate, especially if you've been working a lot. Um, maybe consider, get some insight. The Two of Wands, being at a crossroads, needing to make a decision. Let's see what else is behind that. The Ace of Cups, a new beginning, a new emotional beginning, the heart beginning to open up. Realizing your own self-worth. For some of you, this could be new love and romance. And another night, the Knight of Swords, offers and opportunities coming in, delivering messages or information. Hmm. I'm 
I'm not going to clarify the first four cards because you look pretty stable and pretty set there with work, money, physical structure. Let's clarify that page of wands. The Magician. The Ten of Cups, the Happy Home card. And the Two of Cups, Soulmate, Kindred Spirits. It's interesting because we're clarifying the page of wands and the first card out, Leo, is the magician who is the supreme manifester. I mean, the magician is a card that represents success that comes through the combination of your own God-given talents and then the hard work that it takes to actually manifest something into reality because the magician has walked a very long road. He started off as, you know, just an apprentice, and he's learned through a lot of experience, trial and error, success and failure, uh, control over all four of the elements. So now he knows to t how to take what's in his head and what's in his heart and actually manifest that into physical reality. And then we have the Ten of Cups, which is the happy home card, marriage, childbirth, blessings, the white picket fence, whatever that means to you, and the Two of Cups, the soulmate, kindred spirit card. It's like, it, it feels like the page, the page is trying or wanting to manifest like their ultimate Ten of Cups. Again, that, what that is is going to vary, you know. Marriage, the white picket fence, home, family, children with, the, you know, your soulmate, your kindred spirit, really trying to manifest that. However, it's kind of interesting because the, the Page of Wands can't manifest anything yet because he's still a student. He doesn't have the the kind of experience or maturity level, shall we say, because it might be an older person just acting in an immature way. Um, maybe, and, with the, and the magician can be somewhat of a trickster. So it might be that there is someone in your life, Leo, who is acting like a page. You might look like a king or something like that, or a queen, and acting like a page, but promising to manifest these things with you, particularly if it's a romantic relationship, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. Interesting. Let me let me clarify a few things, see if we can put this together a little better. Clarify the Knight of Cups. Because the Page of Wands is bringing the Knight of Cups, which is some kind of, you know, love offer of some kind. I feel like, Leo, there's someone in your life that's trying to give you the illusion that, well, let me clarify this. Yeah, I feel like illusions here, like you're, I, I suppose being tricked, but not in a vindictive way. I really feel like this page of wands really cares about you or even feels like you're their person. It might be another fire sign, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius. I do not feel like, for those of you for whom this aspect of the reading is love and romance, I don't feel like the page of wands is you. It feels like it's someone that is in your life or that you're involved with somehow that really does care about you and feel like and love you and feel like you're their person. But they're trying, they're creating this illusion of a happy home that isn't really real. Clarify the Knight of Cups. The Lovers and the Three of Cups. So making a decision, partying, having a good time. Leo, for some of you for whom this is a love and romance connection, it feels like you actually want your Ten of Cups with this person. I feel like this is somebody you already have a relationship with or is in your life. 
you know, marriage, home, the whole picture, that white picket fence sort of thing. And I feel like this person wants to have that with you, but not in the way that you want to have it. You know, so for example, if you're with someone and you've been together for a while and you want to get married, you want to have like the traditional sort of happy home thing, it feels like they're telling you, look, I love you, you're my person, and I feel like they really mean that, they really feel that. Um, they're saying, we, all, we already have this, we don't need the other accoutrements, we don't need the marriage, we don't need the legal stuff, we don't need all of that kind of stuff. Because I feel like they're acting in a way that isn't appropriate to their age and status. You know, like a, a person who's in their 40s or 50s or even more, um, who are, you know, acting as if, you know, they're younger or in a phase of their life which is actually over with now. You know, and what they're actually really interested in and really wanting you to take is the Three of Cups, which is a card of, you know, really having a good time together and being focused on good times. And, you know, and there isn't anything wrong with that. But I feel like there's a disconnect here. And I feel like they're trying to kind of cast an illusion that what the two of you have is great the way that it is. And you, it doesn't need to be formal or legal or anything like that because it's already great the way that it is. Um, and, you know, it's all about having a good time, and it's not really real. I feel actually, Leo, that some of you may have another offer coming in, perhaps, towards the end of February, even in March, because I get this feeling that Either you're going to be having another love and romance offer or opportunity or option coming up if you don't have one, or what you really need to do is choose between the kind of thing that this Page of Wands is offering you versus what you really want. It's kind of like because of their own fears about whatever, I mean, you know, you would know your story and your person. Maybe they've had negative experiences in the past or in, in this area of life or something, but I feel like. <coughs> excuse me like you really have to choose between the ultimate of what you want um, or a, a lesser compromised version of that in order to keep this person in your life which means that in order to <coughs> excuse me in order to have the even the the hope and the the opportunity to have your ten of cups and happy home that you would actually have to make a decision to detach yourself from this person so that you can open up yourself to what it is that you really want. I think that what you're f struggling with here, at least for the last two weeks of February, because like money and work and business and stuff, that looks really good for, for many of you. It's the emotional or, or love area of life. It, and it feels like you're struggling between you know, wanting to stay in the relationship even though it isn't your Ten of Cups, it isn't what you really want. You stay because you love the person and sometimes you think you want to, f it's almost as if you, you kind of fantasize about it being that or tell yourself that it's great the way it is. You Maybe I really don't need that other stuff, um, but you do. And I think what you're being asked to do here is, you know, make a difficult choice. Either settle for this once and for all and find a way to, to be happy and at peace with that or, you know, make a decision not to. You know, I'm, yeah, let me, what is the energy between Leo and this Page of Wands? For those Leos, for him, the Page of Wands is an external person. What's the energy that Leo has about, how does Leo feel about the Page of Wands? The Ten of Wands, yeah, a long-held burden that is coming to an end or needs to be coming to an end. Interesting. Okay, so whether or not you have an active other choice or options, Leo, particularly in Love and Romance, It feels like what you have is just a shadow of what you really want. And the reason that you keep in it, one, is because of the emotional attachment you have to this person and this situation that you're in. And two, because they are probably from time to time very convincing in, in you know, trying to tell you that you already have the Ten of Cups. You know, why do all that other stuff? 
That's kind of what I'm getting. So that's the position that you're in, which means that you either have to find a way to to have peace and acceptance in what you're at, accepting that it will likely not be something else, or detaching yourself so that you can have the hope and the opportunity of you know the kind of life that you truly want because it's all about making decisions here and and not fooling yourself with what is not really real if that makes sense it feels pretty specific for some of you so let's pull some final advice and guidance cards not on the decision you need to make because that's going to vary per person in a general reading but on what you need to focus on in order to make the decision what does Leo need to focus on in order to make the best decision possible to the last half of February? The Nine of Wands. Getting through to the end of something and asking yourself if you really do want to continue with this. The Eight of Cups. Leaving and walking away from that which is not your fulfillment and joy. In order to achieve victory, recognition, It feels like for many of you, Leo, that spirit is asking you to take, just between you and yourself, to take a really hard look at what you have now in the emotional arena of life. Because the other stuff looks pretty good. And ask yourself, what is your true joy, your wish fulfillment in that area of life? Does what you have match that? It doesn't look like it does. Is there the opportunity of it turning into that? Likely not. I think this has been going on for quite some time, and you know it's been going on for quite some time, but you're afraid to bring it to an end or say, look, I have to go if this isn't going, you know, and stop listening, stop going around and around and around and, and having the same sort of circular kind of arguments or discussions about this. You can stay with the Eight of Cups, but it's not your Nine of Cups or your Ten of Cups. You want the Ten of Cups. In the Eight of Cups, you know, you can drink from these cups, but they're not like the fulfillment of what you really want. So it's about kind of taking a look at that and perhaps making some decisions around that. Um, for others of you, if all of this offer opportunity stuff, it might not be love and romance. It might be related to job, work, and career, in which case the advice is fundamentally the same. You know, um, it's about leaving behind what isn't completely working for you in order to take, um, and in order to have the offer and options and opportunities for something new that's going to be more fulfilling for you. So I hope that makes sense. So Leo, that is your reading for the last half of February. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if any of these readings resonate with you and you'd like to reach out for a personal reading, take a deeper look at something, you can email me directly at maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. I'd be most happy to hear from you. You can see that by clicking on the description link below. And I will see you all in a couple of weeks for the March general readings. Until then, stay safe and well, be blessed, and I hope to see you back here again soon.